Okay, I'm back after last episode's rather disappointing and frustrating end where I figured out that my second-hand ME221 would not regulate voltage from the alternator at all. It was a massive kick in the nuts, if I'm honest, especially after dropping nearly 500 pounds on the thing. I guess it's always a risk when you buy second-hand parts, but maybe, just maybe, I have a workaround. And that workaround looks like this. When life gives you lemons, make alternators. So here's the deal. This is an alternator off a Mark I MX-5 and the key things with these early units is that voltage regulation is taken care of inside here, inside the alternator itself. Unlike the Mark II's and onwards, like mine where the ECU took over control of that job. So in theory, by fitting this alternator to my car, I could bypass our little ECU issue entirely. Now, as this is a Mark I alternator and I'm fitting it to a Mark II, it should be a bolt-in swap, but there are some wiring differences that I need to take care of to make this work. But as this unit set me back a mere 20 pounds, again, eBay, I think it's definitely worth a shot before I explore other options. And the only other option at this point I can see being sending the ECU back to Motorsport Electronics for diagnosis and repair, which I'm sure will be into the hundreds. So this is definitely worth a shot. See if we can make it work before we cross that bridge. Right, I've jacked up the front of the car and supported it on some axle stands because to get this alternator out, there's a few bolts I need to remove. Some I can get from the top here, the others I'm gonna have to go underneath to get. Now I've also disconnected the battery before starting this and that's so I don't short anything out or electrocute myself in the process of doing this. I recommend you do the same. So the first thing I need to remove is the intake support bracket. Now this is held on by three 14 millimeter bolts. Two I can get from the top here, one I'm gonna have to go underneath to get. Now access is a little tight here because of my intake setup but I've got a 14 millimeter socket on one of those UJ things and that should allow me to get down there to undo these bolts. I'm also going to disconnect this inlet air temperature sensor here so I don't snag this wire while I'm doing it. One out, put it somewhere safe. Second one. Right, the last intake support bolt I'll get to when I move to working on underneath the car. So still working from the top here, the next thing I need to remove is the alternator tensioner bracket. So you need a 12 millimeter spanner or socket for this, slacken the tensioning bolt, remove the lock bolt, and that whole lot should just come out. Like that. Right, next up we need to remove the wires going to the alternator. So there's two small wires going to a plug at the back. You need to push down the tab and then pull it to remove that. And then the one larger wire, that is a permanently live wire and it's connected directly to the positive terminal of the battery. So if you haven't already, disconnect the battery. Don't say I didn't warn you twice. So to get that off, you've just got to pop the cover off to expose the 12 millimeter nut undo that and then that terminal can be removed. So plug out first, push the tab and pull it. There we go. Pop the cover off that. 12 millimeter spanner. Right, cool, I think that's everything from up the top here. We've removed the two intake bracket support bolts, we've removed the tensioner from the alternator and unplugged the wire. So yeah, that's it. Now I can move to working underneath the car. Right, working from underneath, the first thing I need to remove is the lower intake support bracket bolt. It's a 14 millimeter, so I've got my deep socket. I'll back that out and then the intake support bracket itself should just lower out of the engine bay. There you go, and you might be thinking, why did I need to remove that? Well, you're about to find out why, because the next bolt I need to remove is the lower alternator pivot bolt. 
because there's no way you're going to get that out with this bracket in place. Now it is a 14 millimeter axis is quite tight here so I'm going to go with the old double spanner technique hopefully break this thing loose and then unscrew it and that should be about it the alternator will come out. Okay, lower pivot bolt removed. Now push the alternator as close to the engine as you can get it. That will give you enough slack in the belt to remove that. And now the alternator can be removed, I think. And there we go, perfectly good low mileage unit about to be replaced with a super high mileage older unit because cars, ladies and gents. So that is the Mark II alternator removed. Now, if you were replacing a like-for-like -like unit, the next part would be pretty straightforward. You just reverse what you did to remove it to reinstall it. Unfortunately for me, as I'm replacing this with a Mark I unit, there are some wiring differences that I need to take care of. And to do that, I need to go behind the dash in the car. So a quick look at some wiring diagrams from the Mark I uh, diagram that you're looking at here to the Mark II here. And the main difference I can see between them is the powertrain control module that exists on the Mark II, but does not exist on the Mark I. Now this I imagine is referring to the ECU. So I need to bypass this. And here's how I plan to do it. So I'm gonna start from the left-hand side of the alternator and we've got the white wire. Now this is the permanently live wire that I disconnected earlier. And this is identical in both diagrams. So we can hook this up to the Mark I alternator just the same. There's no need to change anything there. Now the next three wires, the grey wire, the grey and red wire, and the brown and red wire, I do need to change. So I've located these wires under the dash here by my feet, and I'm going to cut all of these three wires. The wires heading back to the ECU, I'm going to insulate and tie out of the weight to prevent any shorts. And then working on the alternator side of the wires, I'm going to take the grey wire and connect it directly to the brown and red wire, which will take care of those two wires. And that just leaves me with the gray and red wire, which I'm gonna run to a switched 12 volt live source, like it is in the Mark I diagram. So I'll probably get that from the fuse box for now using a tap. And that should complete this rewire. And if this mod works, it should allow the Mark I alternator to regulate itself with no interference from the ECU. Now, I am going to do a quick continuity check on all these wires to make sure I attack the right ones underneath the dash. And this is going to form the basis of a tech tip video. So if you want to see how to do that, click the link that's above my head right now. Cool, I'm going to get on with this rewire. And if all goes to plan, it should turn out something like this. So here we are under the dash looking at the wiring modifications and you'll notice I've crimped rather than soldered for now. And that's because if this whole job fails miserably, uh, I can revert back to stock by just swapping over a few of these connectors. So here you can see the grey wire is connected straight to the brown and red wire, which completely bypasses the ECU. And then I've cut off the grey and red wire and routed it to a switched live source in the fuse box. And this is gonna send 12 volts straight to the alternator whenever the ignition is switched on. And again, this is a basic fuse tap and is completely reversible. So I'm hoping that takes care of the wiring side of things. Now let's get this replacement alternator installed into the engine bay. Right back under the car, let's get this replacement thrown in. Same process, just in reverse. So. Maneuver it into place and get the lower bolt in. Get the belt on. Right, the lower bolt's back in there. I've just nipped it up. Uh, next thing to install is the intake support bracket. A lot of people actually don't bother with this, but I think I've annoyed the car enough for one day, so I'm going to put it back, keep it happy. Okay, so both of those bolts, the lower pivot bolt for the alternator 
and the lower bolt for the intake support bracket. I've just nipped those up for now and I'll complete the final torque down once I've gone up into the engine bay and installed everything else. So let's go there and do that. Right, working back from the top again, let's get the wires hooked up to the alternator. Permanent live first. There we go, that's nipped down. Pop the cover back on. Just the one plug left now. And the plug back in. That's the wiring taken care of. Now let's get the tensioner bracket back on and tension the belt. Tensioner. Right, so using a 12 millimeter socket, tension the belt and then nip down the lock bolt. There we go, and now the last thing to do is get the two intake support bracket bolts in from the top here. Actually, that's not the last thing to do. The last thing I'm gonna to need to do is plug the inlet air temperature sensor back in. Right, that's the intake support bolts nipped up. Inlet air temperature sensor, plug that back in. Now what I need to do is go back underneath and nip up those two bolts, the lower intake support bolt and the alternator pivot bolt. And then that alternator is installed and fingers crossed, it's time to test it. Right, just to recap what I have done so far, I have swapped the alternator in this car for a Mark 1 alternator. I've taken care of the wiring side of things under the dash and I've just reconnected the battery. So it's time to start the car and hopefully this alternator will charge, but most crucially, regulate the voltage when the engine is running. Let's start the car and find out. Ignition on. Battery lights come on as normal. It's gone off as the car started. Right with the car idling away here now, I'm gonna go into the boot with the multimeter and check the voltage at the battery to see if this alternator is charging. Right, perfect. This alternator is charging and regulating voltage. I'm seeing 14.3 volts at the battery, which seems about right as it's idling. So that is good news. But the big question is, will this allow me to get me up and running on my ME221 ECU? I don't know. And you're gonna have to wait till next episode to find out. But in the meantime, cross your fingers. I know I will be. So that's about it for another episode. But before I go, let's do a quick budget recap because I haven't done one of those in a while. So coming in to this episode, I was at 963 pounds and eight pence. And since then, I've spent another 20 pounds on that Mark One alternator that I've just fitted and another two pounds on that fuse tap. The rest of the wiring and stuff I already had in the garage, so no expense for that. So running total as it stands right now is 985 pounds and eight pence. I am about 15 pounds shy of 1K into this build now, which if you don't know, is supercharging this MX-5. And I'll be documenting the entire process right here on this YouTube channel. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks, and I'll see you for the next episode where I'll be attempting take two of getting the ME221 into this car, running and driving. Fingers crossed for that. Stay tuned.